Hello gamers, welcome to the channel. Today, let's take a look at Lutris on the Steam Deck Steam OS. So if you're not familiar with Lutris, it's basically an app that lets you manage install Windows games onto your Steam Deck Steam OS. Well, basically Linux, but in today's tutorial, we're gonna focus on Steam OS. So it should work all the same on Linux as well. Okay, so if you don't have Lutris, make sure you install it. First thing, go to the taskbar and click on this shopping bag, discover software center and then go to search and type Lutris. Oops. Okay, and you should see this orange beta thing. Um, if you haven't got it installed, right here should say an install button. Okay, I've got it installed, so I'm just going to launch it. And it's gonna look something like this without all these uh, little shortcuts because I've already installed some games with this. Um, and like Lutris uses something called wine it's a middle layer a translation layer that helps you um run your windows games on linux okay um it's similar to proton so if you're familiar with steam steam uses proton proton is actually a modified version of wine so it's based on wine okay so they've added their like customization did the um dependencies okay so if sometimes you've installed games on um, Steam with Proton and you've tried different Proton version, it doesn't work. You might want to try Lutris Wine. That might work. Some some games do work this way. Okay, um, It's e easier to work with Wine sometimes. So it really depends. Um, and if you want different versions of Wine on your Lutris, here's a tip. On the left-hand side of Lutris, go to the Wine tab and click here, Manage Versions. And here is where you can download different versions of Wine. Okay, so you've got Wine GE, similar to like Proton GE, different versions, okay. I kind of like this one, Lutris 7.2-2. This is, I think, a Lutris version of Wine. So yeah, a lot of games work using this, this one. I've actually used a lot using this version of Wine. Okay, so yeah, you can experiment with this, download different versions of Wine, test them out uh, for different games. Okay, so if you want to install the game, what you need to do, if you've got already your game folder onto your Steam Deck. Go here to the top left, click the plus button, and then go here, add locally installed game. Okay, and then in today's tutorial, I've got Star Wars Jedi Survivor. So I'm gonna give it a name, the name of my game. And then here, runner, select wine, runs Windows games. Okay, and then game options tab, select the executable. Okay, I've got my games in my games directory and then Star Wars Jedi Survivor, SW Game, Binaries, Win64 and then you select the EXE of your game basically. So Jedi Survivor.exe and then here, Wine Prefix. So for Lutris, you can define where you want to put your prefix folder. Prefix folder is basically the um, like a contained Windows environment, like a virtual machine, okay? Um, for Steam, if you add a non-Steam game, it actually assigns a random number, a random prefix folder for you. But for Lutris, you can define it yourself. So what I like to do is I'd like to go to my home directory in my documents. I created a folder called prefix and here is where I normally put my um, Lutris prefix folder. So I'm going to create a folder here called Star Wars Jedi Survivor. So this is just a blank folder right now. It's blank, okay? So here I'm gonna define it. So go to documents, prefix, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Okay, and then runner options. So wine version, okay? You can select the different wine versions that you've tried before, okay? For this tutorial, I know uh, wine GE 8-26 works, so I'm gonna use this one. Okay, and then I'm just gonna leave everything on default here and then system options also everything on default okay so like you might want to change this if you like checked your game uh, on the internet some people have tried it out and they've got different settings to get it to work you might want to change something here but for this tutorial this game just works fine with default settings so just click save and you can see my game's added here and if i click play it's going to create the prefix folder that i'm telling you so if you go here, it was a blank folder. Now it's not populating. You can see it's creating its prefix folder, the Windows environment. 
the virtual machine if you would like. Okay, now it's done. It's going to run the game. Okay, so the game's running. Okay, so if you like the video so far, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. It really helps out the channel. And subscribe to the channel if you're new. We talk a lot about gaming handouts, especially the Steam Deck, Lenovo Legion Go, Nintendo Switch. Uh, we talk a lot about emulation, mods, cheats, trainers, stuff like that. So if that's your thing, make sure you subscribe to the channel. So my game is booting up right now. So this is like a brand new install of the game. So I think I'm going to go through the agreements and and the basic settings okay yep so let me just quickly go through this okay, skip the opening cutscene yes okay and yeah this is just the default settings so you can see visuals uh, if i scroll down you can see here DLSS upscale is unsupported and frame generation is unsupported because I'm on the Steam Deck. doesn't have an NVIDIA GPU, obviously, uh, but we're going to fix that because there is a DLSS enabler mod that lets me uh, toggle this on. Obviously, it's not DLSS, but um, it lets me toggle it on and then it translates it to AMD FSR and then I can toggle on frame generation, which gives me a big boost. And people have been asking me, how do I install this mod if my game's installed through Lutra. So that's what we're gonna do. So let me quit this game right now. Okay, so before we go any further, if you're interested in this game, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, I recommend supporting the developers and buying this game at instantgaming.com. If you're not familiar with instantgaming.com, they're the sponsor of today's video and I'm their official partner. Make sure you check them out using my link below. And this game is currently on 71% discount. And they can do this because they buy their games directly from the game developers, cutting out any middleman and they buy in bulk. So they negotiate deep discounts and that, translates to discounts for you if you use my link i do get a little kickback to support me without additional cost to you so make sure you check them out thank you instant gaming for sponsoring this video okay and i'm gonna go to my uh game folder so games set, uh star wars jedi survivor and here so sw game binaries win64 so here's where i'm going to put my mod files okay so now, once you've got your game folder located, we're going to download the mod, okay, uh, called DLSS Enabler. I'll leave a link in the description on where to get it. And I'm going to be using the latest version, the latest stable release as of recording, which is 3.02. So depending on when you're watching this, you might be using a different version. But uh, for this tutorial, I'm using 3.02. And yeah, just download it. This is the assets, the exe file. Okay, let's go download. And we're going to go to my downloads folder. And okay, it's downloaded right here. So how I install this, normally I right click it and then I'm just going to run it with Wine Windows Program Loader. Uh, if you don't have this, another way, another way to install this is just add it to Steam. And then open up your Steam library. And it's right here. DLSS enabler setup. And then I'm going to go to its properties. Compatibility, force it to Proton Experimental. Then I'm just going to play it. Okay, it's going to download some, I guess it's downloading the Proton. Okay. So I think let it install first. Run it again. Okay, so once you've downloaded all the Proton stuff, um, we're going to accept the agreement. This is the DLSS enabler installer. So accept the agreement. Next. 
next and here you need to define where you want to install the mod you can install it directly into the game folder for me what i like to do is i like to just create a folder in my downloads folder like the version dlss enabler setup 3.02 and i just install it here it's a blank folder i'm just going to like point it back to this folder that i've created so browse it's in my local ssd so z drive home deck um downloads yeah the lss enabler setup 3.02 okay next and then i'm going to use the version dll version this one if it doesn't work uh you can try different ones Okay, uh, if you have a lot of mods, maybe you want to try like ASI plugin or something like this. So I'm going to use version. I know it works. And then you need to make sure you check this enable support for AMD and Intel GPUs because we're on the Steam Deck. Uh, it's not an NVIDIA uh, GPU. So we have to check this. Okay. And then basically that's it. Next, install. And if you take a look at the folder that I created, it's populating. Okay, so all the mod files are right here. Okay, then you get this error. That's fine. Just click OK. And then we don't need to read the readme. Finish. Okay, and then see, I've got all my mod files here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy it. And I'm going to paste it into the game folder. So the binary is min64 location. So paste it here. Okay, next to my exe file all right paste it here and then we need to do this uh, we need to overwrite this file so you can see this nvngx.dll it's 185.5 kilobytes that's from the mod files here okay uh, we need to replace this so i'm going to delete this first so move it to trash and then i need to locate the, the dll for my Star Wars game. So go back to the game folder, the root, okay? And then there's an engine and then plugins, runtime, NVIDIA, DLSS. So you need to locate this. Uh, every game is a little bit different. So you might need to like search for it yourself, dig into the files. So it's basically looks something like this, DLSS binaries, third party, Win64. And we need to find this file nvngx underscore dlss dot dll it's 33.8 megabytes so i'm going to copy it and then i'm going to paste it here and i'm going to change the name to the file that we just deleted so nvngx dot dll that's the file we want all right it's just a copy of this but we renamed it to this that we deleted before so now i'm going to cut this and paste it back to my game folder where my mod files are. So SW game binaries win64 right here. I'm going to paste it here. Okay. And because like this game, like the mod, we use the version .dll, right? But like for Linux, it doesn't automatically detect this DLL and run it to load our mod. So we need to force it. And like before, in uh, Steam, we can do this by going to properties and adding a launch options, but you don't have that in Lutris. So how do we do that? So in Steam, what we did was we did this wine DLL overrides equals like version equals n comma b, something like this. So we just do this for Steam. So that's why a lot of people got confused because I have done a lot of videos showing you how to do this on the non-Steam, uh, on the Steam library. This is what you need to do for Steam. But for Lutris, okay, this we can delete because we don't really need the installer anymore. We can save up some space. So remove non-Steam game from your library. Okay. Okay. Um, and then, okay, so for your Lutris, what you need to do is select your game, right click it. There's two ways to do this. So click configure, click configure. Uh, how I normally do it is I just go to uh, the game configuration, go to runner options, scroll down a bit and you've got this DLL overrides. Okay, and here you just click add the key. We're gonna do version 
because version dot dll so if you change like if you use win mm or different different dll you can ch put it here and then the value is just n comma b that's it save that's just how you that's one way to do it another way is uh you can go select your game and you can just go here wine configuration Um, and then go to this libraries tab and you can just add it here. So you can just add version. Just add it here. That's also one way to do it. Okay. You don't have to do it twice. So I'm just going to remove this. Just going to remove this. Uh, that's, uh, and let's, let's run the game. And we should be able to enable DLSS and frame generation in the settings, in the, in the visual settings. And that helps us uh, run the FSR3 frame generation mod and gives us, you know, more performance. That's how you install it, uh, these mods. Uh, it also works with like mods that require like a uh, framework, uh, um, uh, what's that called? The uh, ASI loaders where you need the DLL to run those ASI loaders. And also the reshade mods that use reshade uh, because you need to run the DLL and Linux by default doesn't run those DLLs. Okay, so let's go to options, visuals, okay, scroll down and you can see here NVIDIA DLSS, and, like we can toggle this. Before it was like unsupported. See so here now we can toggle it on and off and all that. Yeah, that, that, that means the the... It's working. Okay. That's it. All right, so I'll leave it here. If you have any issues, let me know in the comment section. I'll try my best to help you out. And if you don't have issues, just say something nice in the comment section and we can engage in a little conversation and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.